Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. How's everybody doing tonight? We got a great guest tonight, George. It's a guy who just knows a lot about marketing for voiceover. And that's Mark Scott. Mark, how you doing? It's not so much that I know a lot. It's just that I sound like I do. And then people believe me. But that's half a voiceover right yeah, there. Yeah, right. You got to sound believable. Right? It's the acting. You convince them. You tell a good story. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully we'll convince lots of people. George, you've got lots of stuff tonight, too, and we're going to have a great time, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've got the tech talk later. You guys can tune in for that. All right. Excellent. All right. Time for VoiceOver Body Shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together... From the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, Remote Studio Connections for Everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello, everybody out there and all the points in between and outside of those. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Yes. All righty. Well, welcome to the show. We got a great show for you tonight. Lots of important information. You know, we could just sit here and, and you know, and chew the fat for a while about all sorts of stuff. Uh, and we do. got a lot of stuff to talk about, about marketing and stuff. But at least, you know, George and I did not hurt ourselves too much over the last couple of weeks. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, you go for your bike rides and you didn't fall off your bike. Although, while reaching over to kiss my wife uh, good morning a couple of weeks ago, she jabbed her glasses right into my eye. It I'm looked imagining a lot her worse. physically <laughs> taking her head with her glasses and jamming it into your eye. It was like that. That's exactly what happened, right? There's nothing like blood coming out of your eye to go, this is not good. Oh, man. But, uh, yeah, it, 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 looked, right. it looked a lot worse than it really was. But, you know, didn't affect yeah. my vision. Missed my cornea by that much. We all have those stories. Yes. Missing our corneas by that much. Right. And, and the older you get, the more you have of them. <laughs> So. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> uh. Anyway, we we're we're going to talk about voiceover marketing tonight, and mm -hmm. uh, so if you've got a question, again, throw it in the chat room. Whether you're on Facebook or whether you're watching on YouTube mm -hmm. or wherever it is that you are watching the show, if you're watching it live, which is the advantage of watching it live, yeah, uh, you you can you can do that. And uh, so let's introduce our guest tonight, and uh, so you can understand exactly who he is and why it's so important that we have him on tonight. Uh, Mark Scott is a business and marketing coach for voice actors. His objective is very simple, to give you the tools, resources, and coaching you need to help grow your voice over business. And his website is The Veopreneur, which is a great title. Mark, welcome to Voice Over Body Shop. I got to tell you guys, when I saw the opening to the show and all of these people that you've had on, I suddenly felt very intimidated and, and a little bit unworthy. So now I'm all nervous and, and self-conscious and whatever, but that's okay. We'll still talk marketing. 
I find that oh. hard to believe, but <laughs> it's like a list after a list after a list. And then some guy in plaid from Canada, you are, you're not far from where I'm from in, was it Port Dalhousie, uh, Ontario? I am, I'm near Port Dover, Ontario. Oh, Port Dover. Yes. Okay. Cause nobody can pronounce Port Dalhousie. It's like, how does that said? Anyway. So you got a lot of snow, which is why you're dressed like, you know, you're going hunting or something. And, uh, You've got like a foot of snow overnight there. Yes. I was doing the very Canadian thing today, two and a half hours of snow blowing as opposed to, you know, being in the studio recording voiceovers or whatever. So yeah, we got, we got a foot overnight and it was very unexpected. You know, it's coming. They said, look, they're going to get lake effect snow. You, you, you know, but it always happens when you're asleep and you wake up, you open the window like, holy crap. It's like, <laughs> I woke up this morning. I checked the security cameras on my phone and I was like, nope, going back to bed. That's enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> Snow day. Yep. Anyway, so, uh, you know, I've been following your stuff for a long time. You've, you know, you've got the VOpreneur site. You know, you're doing, what are some of the things you're doing? You've got a, we uh, a podcast, you've got the web page. What is, what is all the stuff that you're doing? Tell us a little bit about what you do. I mean, it all started out as a blog. And Remember I did a blog those? for many, many years. And then I decided that blogging was hard work. So I thought it would be easier <laughs> to do YouTube videos. And so I, then I started doing YouTube videos and then YouTube videos were like, wow, this is really hard work. They became really hard work. Yeah, I'm going to be like, I'm going to do podcasts <laughs> because you know, I'm a radio guy. How hard can it be to do a podcast? Let me tell you, I should have just stuck to blogging. Guess what? That's hard work too. <laughs> yeah, that's even harder than YouTube videos. And so now I, I actually do the podcast and the YouTube videos at the same time, which just, you know, like double the pleasure there, double the fun, but uh, there's there's always some sort of new content going out somewhere into the interwebs. That's yeah. our that's our gameplay too. We 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 simulcast all this stuff and put it out on podcast because just no like, there's just no time to produce a separate show for each. Anytime medium. somebody comes to me and says, Mark, I'm thinking about starting a podcast, what's your advice? My advice is don't. <laughs> yeah. As, as we always say, you know, everybody can do a podcast. It doesn't mean everybody should. Agreed. Yeah, but if you know how, I mean, if you came out of radio, doing a podcast is just like, you know, like you were the public service director, opening, body, close, out of there. And just Nobody solving technical issues live on the air. Right, exactly. Yeah. But everybody else thinks so you're a magician. Easier. I just really thought it was going to be so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> I so grossly underestimated how much work goes into doing something like that. So I very much appreciate what you guys are doing right now. Well, we, we appreciate you coming on tonight. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, marketing. I mean, and not marketing in general, we're going to talk about voiceover marketing specifically. And, you know, and to me, marketing has always been intimidating because I took one class in marketing in college and I didn't fail it, but I also don't recall paying attention a whole lot, you know, and you remember little things like packaging research, you know, like they were all just words. But why are people so oh, afraid of attention a whole lot? You know, and you're what? That was okay. my fault. Okay. George. All right. That's one edit. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> what's and all Dan, what's and all, <laughs> why are people so intimidated by marketing? I mean, I know why I am, but what are you finding with, you know, talking to, you know, your clients about it? I think the biggest thing is a misperception of, of what it is. And I think that somewhere along the way it got associated with the telemarketer the used car salesman you know all of the dirty aspects of marketing the robo calls that we get at you know eight o'clock at night when we're trying to just relax on the couch or whatever we've we've got this real negative image this negative narrative around what marketing actually is and so i think that part of it because i can tell you hands down the number one thing that I hear from voice actors when I ask them about why they are or aren't, I don't want to be annoying. I am afraid of being annoying. That's, that's it. And so it's, it comes back to that whole used car salesman, you know, the dirty feeling of, I just sold somebody something and now I've got to go take a shower because I feel bad about it. It's, it's that, that side of marketing, which so much of it is just narrative based and it's a narrative that's not based on any actual reality. And so I think that's honestly where, where a lot of it stems from is, is just learning that we need to flip the narrative on what marketing actually is and, and stop making it to be such a, a dirty thing because it's not. Because at the end of the day, the way I like to look at it is I know that I offer something of value to my clients. 
I, you know, the example that I love to give because I've been there and done it. And I think most people can identify with it at some point. If you've had a job outside of voiceover, you've probably sat through some form of employee training. And if it was recorded, you probably wanted to smash your face off the brick wall because they just couldn't wait for it to end because, you know, Bob from accounting, no offense to Bob, but Bob recorded it because the, the boss asked him to, and you had to sit and suffer through that. I know I can make that better. I know that I bring something of value to every project that I'm going to work on with my clients. And so when I think about it from that way, I get excited to work with them. I get excited to tell them, but I get excited to have the opportunity to partner with them because I know that we're going to create a great product in the end. And so I try to encourage people to think about that side of things as opposed to the dirty used car salesman side of things. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, and you don't want to go out there and say, Hey, you got to hire me because I got a great voice. It's not that at all. It's, you know, there's so many different pieces to it, but people have to understand it's not about getting into this business and getting an agent and they're going to find you all this work. The people who really succeed in this business are the ones that go out there and make the cold calls and send out the emails and, and do what it takes to get their own work. You get an agent when you're making money because of all the work you've done. Yeah. And, and that's really what it's about. So, you know, we're, we're going through this pandemic now. I think, I think most people are aware of it now. Um, you know, something about it in the news has the COVID pandemic created a need for perhaps a different marketing approach for mm -hmm. the time being. I think in the beginning, uh, you know, so we're talking like spring of, of 2020, there was definitely a different approach that had to be taken because everybody at that point was impacted in some way, right? I had businesses that I've worked with for years that don't exist anymore. I had clients that I used to work with multiple times a month who couldn't get a video to save their lives because all of the clients that they worked with were closed, right? So it did take a different kind of nuanced approach to, to reach out to people. And you don't want to run the risk of sounding like you're asking for work from somebody who just got laid off or just lost their job or their company just went under or whatever. I think that that went on for the, the first part of 2020. I think last year, like, look, nobody thought we were still going to be here at this point. I don't think anyway, nobody thought we were still going to be here in this pandemic at this point. So 2021, there was, there was waves of a lot of optimism and then there'd be a wave of COVID and then the optimism would fade away. And then th that wave would fade down and optimism would come back again. And so there was a lot of back and forth. Mm. I think the biggest thing now is people are over it and <laughs> yeah. it has become incredibly political and divisive. And so it's something that I'm trying not to talk a lot about anymore. And so I still see emails from everybody once in a while. I still see emails from voice actors and even from clients every once in a while that are like, you know, uh, talking about these unprecedented times. Yeah, we, we stopped wanting to hear that in, you know, April of 2020. We were yeah, over that, much, yeah. that phrase, right? It's been precedented. Right? It happened last year and the year before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd say it's been precedented. Yeah, right there's now. a precedent for it now. But, <laughs> but I, I do think that it's, I, I do think as much as possible, just moving on from that, not talking about what's going on, you know, not talking about uh, people start to feel sorry for themselves. So, I mean, we're locked down here again in, in Ontario. It's incredibly frustrating. I'm, mm. I'm totally over that again too. Right. But nobody wants to hear me whine and gripe and complain about that either. And so I, I really think that now it's, uh, I mean, would I say that it's a full return to status quo and how I'm marketing? I mean, probably for the most part, trying to be sensitive to recognizing that there may be certain regions, certain countries, certain areas where things are a little bit different, but by and large, it's like, just kind of move on past that message and, and let's kind of focus on what's going to happen on the other side of this thing. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've sort of noticed that, you know, we, I, a lot of people are aware of this when we started the read was we're going to through this together. And then it became more forward thinking. And then I was watching TV last night and there was a new commercial because of, you know, Omicron. It's like, we're going to go through this. And I turned to my wife and I go together. <laughs> and she knew what was, I knew it was coming. We, anyway. we want to get out of it. I mean, we, every, yeah, everybody me wants to get out of it. I know that the reads and again, it's, it's just because nobody thought we were going to be here. Right. If you asked anybody in what October, November, 
in most parts of the world, we thought we were pretty much on the other side of this. And then all of a sudden, this new variant comes and boom, here we are. Cases spiking all over the world and vaccinated, not vaccinated. You're going to get it, whatever. I mean, it it is still a factor maybe in, in reads and in the types of voices and all that sort of stuff. But strictly speaking, from a marketing standpoint at this point, it's not something that I'm really talking a lot about anymore. I've just kind of accepted that people are pretty much over it regardless of how they feel about it they're just over it it's not like yeah. it's insensitive to ignore it's not like we're we all know what's going on yes. it's not insensitive to ignore to not acknowledge it anymore right you, totally you different have, now yeah. from if you had ignored it in the beginning right and, right and that's the thing right we're two years in it's just it's yeah. kind of i mean I, I would to say it's run its course obviously it hasn't but from no, a, it's sort from of a, a new normal, from a, to be honest. Yeah, from a public standpoint, from a marketing standpoint, all that sort of stuff, for most of it, it's, it's kind of, it's like, yeah, it's run its course. Let's talk about mm -hmm. something different now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, I would think, though, that, that it's probably changed some things forever in how we communicate, because uh, it's opened up opportunities, certainly stopped some things. But I think it's probably opened up more opportunities because you know, a lot of people have lost their jobs and decided to go into voiceover. Um, it's like there, well, and, there are a lot of the, other things you could be doing, but on the flip side of that too, there's a lot of people that lost their jobs and have gone into animation that have gone into video production that have yeah. gone into some of these other trades that we might. And so where, where some of the clients that I've worked with, some of the production houses that I've worked with, some of them went under in the beginning, you know, in March and April and May of 2020. Now there's a whole new batch of people who, you know, the great resignation is what everybody's talking about now, right? It's, it's. One thing that COVID did was it caused a lot of people to reevaluate uh, re their priorities and where they want to be in life and what they want to do in life. And so I think that there's a whole new crop of, of uh, opportunity that is going to come out of that because, hey, the other thing that I think that COVID proved is the absolute utter importance of video in every capacity. And so I think that you will see video used. I mean, it's always been used for websites and social media and youtube channels and all that i think that's we're going to see an exponential growth in that because i think that people are finally starting to recognize companies that maybe before wouldn't have done it are going to do it companies that before maybe only did one or two videos maybe they do 12 so i think that's where there, there's a potential upswing in this too and that's just yeah. because simply we're not sitting physically face to face with each other anymore well you right? know one of the things that did it for me and i, I think a lot of people think this way too is we go back to 2020 to early 2020 when the whole world was locked down and you couldn't go anywhere, right? I'm used to going into a store and when I want to buy something, I go into the store, I pick it up, I look at it, I touch it, I read the packaging, all of that sort of stuff, right? I couldn't do that for months. And so I found myself in a place where I was on Amazon or on YouTube or on Vimeo watching videos on products that I never would have watched a video on before. <laughs> Because yeah. how else was I going to know if this is actually what I'm looking for? If this actually does what I want it to do. Mm. And so, you know, I've got some friends that do uh, Amazon e-commerce and there's like, yeah, you get, you pretty much have to have a video for everything that you throw up on Amazon because people have come to expect it. We, you know, we, that we needed that when we couldn't go to the store and it looks stores are going to open up eventually. I mean, in a lot of places they already have, but do you think that people's buying habits are going to change drastically or have we gotten accustomed to the convenience of just watching a video? Yep. That's what I want. One click online delivered to your door the next day. Absolutely. Once again, we're talking with Mark Scott and we're talking about voiceover marketing, which I guess marketing for all sorts of other things probably applies to depending on what type of business you're in, but specifically to voiceover. So, how do you go about finding leads? Now, I used to sell life insurance, so finding leads was everything. You know, you get the Dun & Bradstreet the catalog of every business that you, you know, that, that could be listed in your town or whatever. But voiceover leads are kind of specific. How do you, how, what's the best way to go about and find leads? I think we think voiceover leads are specific, but I think that the category is actually much broader than we give credit to because of the fact that voiceover can be used in so many ways now and so we think about traditional things like you know radio and television stations that are creating commercials or maybe we think about you know the video production company that this is what they do is they create video but maybe we're not thinking about the doctor's office down the street that has a phone system 
or anybody that works in radio, you're going to understand this. Once upon a time, there used to be eight announcers in the building. And those eight announcers spread all the commercial work across all eight of them. Now there's two announcers running a radio station 24-7, and there's seven car dealerships in town. And one of those car dealerships is going to want a voice that isn't one of the two announcers at the building. And so you could go and potentially have a direct relationship with that car dealership and pick up their monthly automotive ads. It's There's so many different ways that it can be used. Over, over the last two years, I picked up a couple of universities that I've never worked with before, but when they started going into... Uh, lockdown mode and they were moving uh, classes online, they started creating e-learning content in a way that they had never done before. And so I had the opportunity to do a, a lot of narration for college or uh, college and university classes. And so, I mean, the one question that I always say is, is who needs a voiceover? And if you really ask yourself that and allow you to brainstorm it out, you realize that just about anybody in some capacity could probably use one, whether it's a, a commercial that they're creating for broadcast a video that they're creating for their website or their YouTube channel, their social media platforms, uh, a training course that they've got to deliver to their employees, IVR phone systems. I mean, there's a thousand different ways. And so when you allow yourself to think about it from that perspective, you realize that there's a lot more places to find work than maybe you realized. But when all else fails, if you go into Google right now and do a search for corporate video production, I did this the other day, I think it's like 1.4 billion results so, you know, contact, place to 20, start. Yeah, contact 20 of them a day and, you know, talk to me in 570 years when you've run out of leads. <laughs> Once again, we're talking with Mark Scott. We're talking about voiceover marketing. If you've got a question, a specific question for Mark about your voiceover marketing stuff or some ideas perhaps you have or you want, you know, maybe a little bit more information about uh, what's the best way to do it, throw it in the chat room and the amazing Jeff Holman will get that question to us. Um, now the thing I remember from college was the different forms of marketing. I mean, you've got email, cold call, social media, everybody's like, and some people try to master one of those or try to master all of them is one more effective than another. I, I guess it sort of depends on what it is, your what type of work you're looking for. I think the, the one that is the most effective is the one that you will actually do. <laughs> and, and yeah, I, probably. And I say that in all seriousness, because one of the one of the things that voice actors are absolutely amazing at is finding barriers for why they can't do this. And so <laughs> they can come up with 100 excuses why I can't do email, why I can't do TikTok, why I can't do Twitter, why I can't do Instagram, whatever. And so my whole thing is I don't care what you do as long as you do something. You will never get me to make a cold call like you could pin me down and shove the phone down my throat and I would choke on it before I would ever make a cold call. Like I'm not going to do it. And so that's not my thing, but I know other voice actors whose entire business has been built on cold calling. Right? right. So my whole thing is do what you enjoy doing because then you're so much more likely to do it. So if you're somebody who is very visually creative and loves photography and all of that sort of stuff, you know, use a platform like Instagram as a way to express yourself or flip it and do like Paul Strickwarda does. And he's turned Instagram into a microblogging platform and that's working out tremendously well for him. If you are okay doing video, if you're comfortable being on camera, take advantage of a platform like TikTok. I interviewed Stefan Johnson on my podcast recently. That's a voice actor with over 6 million followers on TikTok. That's a guy who has found a comfortable place to market himself and he's doing it incredibly effectively. If email is your thing, do email. I will never tell you that one is better than the other or that one is more effective than the other, only to the extent of whatever you will do is what is going to produce results for you. Yeah, that makes total sense. I mean, I hate cold calling because, you know, I, when, like I said, when I was selling life insurance, I broke several phones. Uh, like, it's <laughs> awful. <laughs> oh, it's you, 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 the thing is, is, as voice actors, you would hope that we would have a little bit more, wouldn't be quite as shy about it. Yep. But, you know, it's about rejection. And yep. as voice actors, that's our way of life is rejection. You know, audition, 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 nothing, 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 nothing. You know, we used to go by the rule of 25. Uh, you know, if you made 25 or 21, it was. If you made 21 calls, you might get one yes. Yep. But, and then there's the other thing of every no is one no closer to a yes. Yep. So, it, you know, mm. 
And as my father-in-law used to say, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Yes. That's well yeah. said. Yeah. So my father, my, my, my stepfather had a lot of good ones too. And, and, you know, and, and then of course there was the other one, you know, my, my other stepfather, Larry, who always had this great expression, when you really don't want to do something, one excuse is as good as another. <laughs> I deal with that every day. That's, that's, <laughs> that's my whole entire coaching business right there is dealing with people's excuses. So I'm very, very well familiar with that side. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then it's always like, well, why don't you do this? Um, uh, you know, either they're intimidated or, you know, they just don't really know, or they don't want you to know that they don't know. And that's why they Here, don't do Here's it. the thing. I have worked with hundreds, maybe thousands of voice actors and whether it's through courses that I've taught or through one-on-one -on -one coaching or speaking at conferences, you know, WovoCon, VO Atlanta, whatever. I know thousands of voice actors that have done marketing. And at this point, and I've asked, I do not know of one voice actor who has ever been called out publicly and shamed for sending a marketing email or sending a LinkedIn request or following a potential lead on Instagram or whatever. Like, I don't know what we think is going to happen, but nobody is going to take out a billboard on the side of the freeway and slap your picture on it and say, this lunatic sent me a marketing email. Can you believe the audacity of this person? Like, I don't, we, I don't know what we think is going to happen, but it, like, they're already not hiring you. You have nothing to lose. Send the dang email, make the connection request, post the video on TikTok. I mean, what's the worst that happens? Somebody laughs at you. Yeah, but maybe they laugh at you and then they tell your friends and then or they tell their friends and then their friends watch the video. And then one of their friends happens to be a video producer who then reaches out to you and hires like you don't know, right? We always assume the worst case scenario, the mm. worst case scenario never happens. Right. No, that's true. And, and ch chances are you're not going to hear anything. And, it, and if you do hear anything, it's probably something positive because somebody saw what you said or it's heard what you said. It's a complete stranger. If they don't respond to my email, it is not going to hurt my feelings. I didn't know them anyway, right? <laughs> like, so get over yourself and send the dang email. Wow, that, there's a that, there's a gold nugget right there. People <laughs> got to follow that one. So after you've done all this, and you've made some cold calls, and you've sent out some emails, and you've made a few TikTok videos, and perhaps you've targeted them to certain areas or to specific people. How important is follow-up? I think anybody who's ever looked for a job and they applied and they following up is very important. How important is it when, you know, in, in doing a uh, voiceover work? Follow-up is probably the next most important thing. And I guarantee you that it is where most voice actors are leaving money on the table. I, I did a coaching session with somebody this week and we talked about he was, you know, I'm a very gifted voice actor, very talented, has worked with some big name clients, but was just going through a drought. And I said, all right, well, let's look at your database of, of your prospects and your clients. When's the last time that you reached out to any of these clients that you've previously worked with? And he'd never done it. And I said, all right, mm -hmm. well, here's your homework assignment. I want you to reach out to every single person that has ever hired you before and just remind them that you're here. Remind them that you are still alive, that you are still available. And then the next day he sends me a message. He says, Mark, I need to talk to you. I got a problem. I'm like, what's your problem? He's like, what do you do when you have too much work? That's all it took. He went from having nothing on Monday to having more jobs lined up than he could handle on Tuesday just because he followed up. We assume that if we send one email or we send one connection request on LinkedIn, that that's all it's going to take. Or... We send the email, we, we have the interaction on social media, we get a positive response. Dan, your demos sound great, we love you. We definitely know that we've got some projects that we would love to work with you on sometime. And then what do you do? You just do nothing and you sit back and you wait for the projects to come and then they forget about you. And then a couple of weeks later, George reaches out and they're like, oh, hey, there's George. We like George, we're gonna hire George because George is who we're thinking about right now, right? So the, the whole thing is just don't let them forget you. Don't let them forget that you're available. So whether that is reaching out to them directly, email, social media, different things like that, maintaining your presence on social media so that people don't forget about you. I mean, 
the only reason mm. why people hire me for coaching is because I'm in their stinking face every single day and they have mm -hmm. no choice but to remember me, right? <laughs> they're going to they're gonna see me on YouTube or they're going to see me on Instagram or LinkedIn or they're watching right now, right? Like they're they're remembering me. This is part why of the Why do you think we're here right now, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> why is, do you think we've been doing this for a long time? This years? is the follow-up strategy, right? <laughs> people don't forget you and that's why when they need tech, they come to you guys because you're who they're thinking of because you're there in front of them all the time. The follow-up strategy is so key. You cannot let them forget you because they will go with the person who they're thinking about at the time. And if that's not mm -hmm. you, you just lost the job. Absolutely. Once again, we're talking with Mark Scott about uh, marketing for your VO business. Again, want to remind you, voiceover is an entrepreneurial business. It's not show business unless you're in show business and those people are already in show business. It's, it's a totally different thing. The successful people are the ones that are doing this kind of stuff. Now, once you start doing all these things and you have perhaps a couple of different irons in the fire when you're doing your, your marketing, you, you, you talk about, you know, cold methods of doing this. How do you keep track of how you're doing with these sort of things? I think you call it, you know, cold marketing metrics. What's that all about? I think that when you're doing any of these strategies, I do think that it's important to track the data to a certain degree. Because if you send a hundred emails to cold leads, so, you know, you did that search for corporate video production on, on Google and you got your 1.4 billion results and you reached out to the first 100 companies that came up in the Google results. If you don't get a single response, there's a problem. And that problem could be your email. It could be the person that you sent the email to. It could be a problem with your website. It could be a problem with your demos. It's hard to say, but. If we know that you got zero responses, we know that there's a problem and we can try to fix it. So I will sit down and I will look at it and say, okay, you know what? Here's what I think. Let's try wording your email this way. And so then we change up the email. Now go send another hundred. Well, now this time you write me back and you say, okay, well, out of the hundred, I got about a 15% response rate. I'm like, all right, that's a lot better. So we've, we've improved. We got 15 responses where before we got zero. So I do think that it's important to track some of those metrics to a degree just to figure out whether or not what you're doing is working. Because the last thing you want to do is sit down and send a thousand emails and never get a response because the email was bad, right? We want to fix it before it gets to that point. And so that's where I think don't obsess over the data. But I do think that if you're doing cold email marketing, I always say that you want to see at least a 15 to 20% response rate. Now that's not specifically a 15 to 20% higher rate. That's a 15 to 20% response rate. So on a hundred emails, 15 to 20 people are going to write back to you. If you're around there, you're probably doing okay. And if you are really targeted with your messaging, and if you're sending a really great email and you've got really killer demos, you know, maybe you get that number up to 25 or 30%. Absolutely. Once again, we're talking with Mark Scott. If you've got a question, throw it in the chat room. A couple people have thrown them in there and, uh, we're going to continue our conversation, talk a little bit maybe about some content strategies for social media. But right now we're going to take a break and we'll be right back on VoiceOver Body Shop with Mark Scott. This is Bill Ratner and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. Oh, it's you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Ah, domestic bliss. Now, as a voice talent, you know that running a voiceover business with family around can be quite a challenge. How do you manage the need for quiet with the noise others in your household make? 
VoiceOver Essentials by Harlan Hogan has the answer. It's their exclusive multicolor LED voiceover recording sign with remote control. Not just a stock on-air or recording sign, it's their exclusive voiceover recording sign. With 20 different colors and included remote control, you can let everybody know, hey, I'm recording in here, and a few moments of relative quiet would be appreciated. With the wafer-thin remote control, you can choose a multitude of options from color to brightness and flashing to fade in and out. You can even set up personal codes, like red means I'm recording, blue playing back, green it's a wrap, and gold when it's cocktail time. Get your Harlan Hogan multicolor LED voiceover recording sign with remote control only at voiceoveressentials.com. So when you hear the word accents, right? You see a piece of copy with it, or there's an audition that says accents required, or maybe an audio book you want to take a stab at. What happens in your head? Do you get like, oh, I don't do accents. Nah, I'm going to pass on that one. What if you said instead, okay, let's do this. Let's figure this out. And I can show you how, because I was shown how. My accent coach is Jim Johnson. He's giving away free lessons this week on the accent class and how to build accents from scratch. So just go to voheroes.com slash accents and get these free lessons. They're all this week. Next week, we'll do a Facebook Live. We'll open registration for the accents class. There'll be an early early action bonus, but go to voheroes.com slash accents now and learn from my accent coach. That's voheroes.com slash accents. Before time began, there was vobs.tv. Watch or else. All right, we're back talking with Mark Scott. You know, Harlan Hogan wanted me to mention something. So if, uh, you, know, if you like the sign, the, uh, the voiceover uh, sign that he has, the special multicolor VO uh, voiceover sign, if you want one, he's running a contest right now. And because we, you know, in that commercial, we talked about the different codes you could use for, you know, you know, I'm recording, I'm doing this. All I can remember is yellow. It's cocktail time. <laughs> and, that, and that's always the one that makes sense to yeah. me. But if you if you write to uh, to Terry, who's uh, Terry Lee, who is, you know, works with him, they're having a contest. If you would like to win a voiceover sign from voiceover essentials. Write to Terry at terry.lee at voiceoveressentials.com and tell them what your code is with depending on the color that you would use on your sign. And they're looking for the most creative one. And the most creative one will win a free sign. So Harlan just wanted me to tell you that. Just, all right. All right. Back with Mark Scott right now. We got a bunch of questions and uh, we'll get to those right now. So, uh, George, from the top. First one in the queue is from Jim McNicholas in the YouTube chat. Um, he says, Mark, where would you prospect to get a bunch of new clients? Any interesting places to prospect? I mean, we already talked about cold calling, but uh, what are your places of favor? I think part of it depends on what you're looking for. So if I'm looking for e-learning, for example, I'm probably going to spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. I've had very good success on LinkedIn in that genre. Uh, if you're looking for something in the character space, maybe you want to do video games or animation or something like that, I would probably spend some time in Twitter because that's a, a spot where there's a very active community in that genre. And so uh, I think that's part of it is it depends a lot on the, the type of work that you're looking for. I do think, I mean, for me, LinkedIn is probably one of my favorite places to go uh, and and build relationships with people because ultimately that's what marketing is, is, is building relationships. But I think there's a lot of good opportunities to be found in that platform. So it's definitely my favorite, I would say. All righty. Yeah. Now from the one and only rhymes with orange, Fred North. What's that one, George? Fred North says question. 99% of my work is retainer based with radio and TV stations built on email marketing. I really audition or market to anyone else. Uh, it's a good living, but I'd like to expand my horizons. What are your top five areas to market, and what is the proper approach? So kind of dovetailing yeah, wide what question we just there. talked about. <laughs> I Ten think minutes, it's important. The, your floor. The floor is yours. <laughs> I think it's an important question because one of the things that I will say when you've got 99% of your work coming from one specific genre is that you run the risk that if anything ever happens in that space, I mean, look, what is more volatile than radio? I mean, 
anybody that's been, I mean, I always say that you have not had a successful radio career until you've been downsized by a conglomerate at least once. I think that's the way that it has to work, right? So you got all your business wrapped up in radio and all it takes is for one company to sell out to another and there goes half your client base, right? So yep. expanding out to having a, a couple of different areas to work in, I think is really key. I mean, I love e-learning. I think there's a lot of money to be made in e-learning. I think that it is a growing genre. I think a lot of people are are worried that the robots are going to take over e-learning. And I think to a degree that will happen on the lower scale of e-learning. But I still think that there's going to be a place for a lot of years going forward for a, a really professional voice actor to to narrate and do a lot of courses. So that's a genre that I think is really good. I think corporate narration is another area we, you know, we talked earlier in the show about video is exploding, right? And so all of these companies that are, have used video in the past that are only going to use it more and companies who haven't tried it are going to be more willing to try it. And so I think there's plenty of opportunities in that space. And the nice thing about that is that it's really easy to go out and get on your own, right? I mean, I could tell you, go get the national commercials. There's big paydays there, but there's also gatekeepers around a lot of that stuff. So if you're looking specifically for what can I go get on my own, a lot of non-broadcast stuff, corporates, explainers, e-learnings, all of those types of things, I think are, are really good areas. And I think there's going to be opportunity in automotive. I know that that's a sector that was just crushed hard from, from COVID and, you know, the chip shortages and all of that sort of stuff. But I think it's an area where it's going to start to bounce back. I think advertising is going to start to happen there. I think you're seeing now, um, Ford has just announced its suite of electric vehicles. GM has announced a bunch of electric vehicles. Like that's an area where I think there's going to be a lot of new advertising opportunities. So, you know, dealerships might be a place that you could go and look for. So I think there's a lot of spaces where you can go and find voiceover work on your own for sure. Absolutely. Uh, Jim McNicholas uh, yes. watching on YouTube. Uh, Mark, talk about how to use social stuff like Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. And those are all very different platforms, and I, I imagine they probably require different strategies. Well, you mentioned a second ago that you, you use them, you fragment how what you market where, depending right. on where the plat best platform for, for the genre, right? I think each one of those platforms offers different opportunities. Uh, I mean, LinkedIn, so far, Dear Lord, please keep it that way. It has still remained a professional network for professionals looking to connect with other professionals. Every yeah. every once in a while, it feels like somebody starts to try to degrade it into Facebook territory, but it usually Birthday bounces wishes. itself back, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, LinkedIn is still very much a professional network. So I'm very cognizant of that audience when I'm posting content on LinkedIn and making sure that it's more professional, business-oriented, business-oriented, entrepreneurial, stuff like that, right? Instagram is a place where people get to know me on a more personal level. I mean, if you ask a hundred voice actors who are familiar with me, they're going to tell you something about the Red Sox, Dr. Pepper or barbecue. Right. And then they know that because they've probably seen me share that stuff on my Instagram platform. And so do I talk about voiceover on Instagram? Of course I do. Do I share some of my coaching stuff on Instagram? Absolutely. But do I sprinkle in my life throughout? Absolutely. I do because Again, you know, I said earlier, marketing's about building relationships. How do you build relationships? You give people a chance to get to know you, to, to get to know the authentic you. I mean, I can't tell you one of my best e-learning clients, like I'm talking like a healthy five figure e-learning client is from the New England area. And we connected because of our love of the Red Sox. Like I didn't have to sell the guy voiceover. We just started talking baseball and then the opportunity presented itself. Right. So using some of these platforms to give people a chance to get to know you. A little bit better you know twitter we talked earlier twitter's a really got a really really active community in the in the character animation gaming you know that whole space and so uh building out your network accordingly to to get connected to those people and find those opportunities would be a really smart way to use a platform like that so it's just trying to uh, a big part of it is figuring out who's the audience that you're trying to reach and what platform are you most likely to be able to reach them on Absolutely. Well, this one came from Jackie Lynn. I already know the answer and you, because you've been giving it to us the last 10 minutes, but she asked how important is LinkedIn? Clearly it's uh, for e-learning. It's extremely important, but I she think, does a, yeah. I, I do think for e-learning, for corporate, for explainers, I mean, even commercial, you can f find those opportunities there. I just, again, cause it's a professional network. The nice thing about it is that people aren't surprised when you connect with them to talk about business. 
business to business. Yeah. It's a B2B place, right? Yep. hundred um, percent. And she also asked, do you do, do you do demos? Is that in your bailiwick at all? Absolutely not. There mm-hmm. are people that are so much smarter and more qualified than me for, for demos. Actually, you know, it's funny. You want to talk about good marketing, the, the J. Michael spot that ran in this episode here, this last break, he said, you probably think I'm going to try to sell you a demo, but they really sell themselves. That's marketing right there. And that's what I tell voice actors. Your job is to get people to your website to listen to your demos. And if your demos are good, you won't have to sell them anything. You'll just have to work out the finer points of the contract, right? I'm counting on the quality of my demos to do all of the selling for me. So I don't have to be a sales guy. I just need to be a marketing guy that gets people to listen to those demos. Absolutely. Uh, Jim McNicholas asks, uh, and this, this is really important too, because we were talking about metrics before. Um, and this, this is probably where you get it from. Which of the thousands of CRMs do you recommend for voiceover? <laughs> I mean, what's your favorite? Clearly, what you like might not be what somebody else likes. This kind of goes back to what's the marketing tactic that works. And my answer was the, the one that you will use. My favorite CRM for voice actors is the one that you will use. Uh, for me, I'm a nimble guy. And that was, I, I'm one of those people that I could have literally flushed a year of my life down the toilet, deep diving into the top 25 CRMs and looking through every feature and benefit (laughs) of every one of them, comparing them back and forth, trying to decide. Yeah, right. Trying to just, and then at the end of the year, I'd been like, I still don't know. And Mm. so literally, (laughs) this was at a WovoCon, actually. Uh, Somebody was teaching a class on Nimble at that point in time. And I was like, all right, that looks good. I'm just going to pick that one and I'm just going to, make it work for me or get to a point where I decide it doesn't. And I saved myself a year of anxiety and stress and, and, you know, researching and deep diving into everyone. And so I've been using nimble now for probably uh, five or six years, maybe. And it does everything that I need it to do. I mean, there's a lot of really good CRMs that are out there. Most of them do basically the same stuff. Uh, But, you know, we talked about the importance of follow-up strategy earlier. You can't, I don't think you can have an effective follow-up strategy without a CRM system in place because unless you're, I mean, genius level, I can't remember all of the people and I can't remember when I talked to them last and when I need to talk to them again. And so I need my CRM system to do that for me. Yeah. Does that generate, you know, reminders for you and that sort of thing? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Most CRMs will give you the ability to build in reminders or, Some of them like nimble has an automated reminder cycle that you can set people. I want to contact them every 30 days or, you know, every, uh, every quarter or every year or whatever. And so you can build in a lot of those reminders automatically. Then you sign into your CRM in the morning and you're like, Oh, here's a list of people I need to contact today. And then you reach out to them. Do they do a good job of the emails, making it into people's inboxes versus getting spam filtered or showing up in, you know, I've had pretty high success rate. I've definitely had pretty high success rate with it because it does use my email address. So the email shows up as being from market, markscottvoiceover.com. Yeah. I'm also very careful though. Like a lot of CRMs will give you the ability to send group messages. Yeah. And if you're sending a group message through a system like MailChimp, you can email 2000 people at one time. And there are protections that are built in place to, to allow you to kind of drip those 2000 emails out. If you're doing it in a CRM, some of them aren't set up for that the same way. And so if you do a big group message, you run a lot higher risk of maybe getting triggered to spam. And so I just limit the number, you know, rather than sending out a group message to 100 people at one time, I might do 25 Monday, 25 Tuesday, 25 Wednesday, 25 Mm -hmm. Thursday, right? So I still get the 100 out, but I save myself the potential of tripping spam filters and stuff. And do you use any other third party tools for social media stuff or just the native platforms themselves? I have played with a whole bunch of different platforms for social media. Uh, I have tried uh, Zoho has a social media manager. I've tried Post Planner. I've tried Hootsuite. Um, oh man, Canva. I've used a bunch of different ones. The one thing that I found consistently across the board was when I would post to my social networks from a third party, I would not get nearly as much organic reach is if I posted directly in the platform itself. So if I mm-hmm. go into Canva and I create a graphic in Canva and I have Canva send that graphic to Facebook, I will get this much organic reach. But if I 
download that graphic from Canva, go into Facebook myself, and then post it natively in the platform, I might get this much organic reach. And so that's the one thing that I seem to find over and over, regardless of which one of those tools that I used. And so I'm at a point now where I just, I'd rather just take the couple minutes and post it natively to each one just to know that I'm getting better reach. All right. Great tip. Uh, yeah. I, I, all of this is, is golden, I'll tell you right now. Uh, question from Mary Beth Scriven, George. What has to do with what we were just talking about and sending out emails? What's that one? Uh, are there templates out there for appropriate wording for effective emails? So how can you get some help? And what's really funny is the last name Scriven, Scriven there's an app called Scrivener for better writing. Yes. So I know that's a weird coincidence, but it's just when I saw just that. Missing an ER there. Yeah. Right? Use yeah. that. If, I've, I've heard of that before. If you want to write your book, that's the app that you, or screenplay or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are lots of different places that you can get templates from. I sell templates as well. I think the biggest thing is uh, keeping them short. That's, that's a big part of it. Uh, I think that email marketing is so much better when it is done on an individual basis, which I know seems counterintuitive. Most people would rather just write a generic message, blitz it out to 100 people and see what sticks. My whole thing is if I take the time to write the email for each individual with a certain portion of it being a template, I know that I'm going to get my open rates a lot higher, right? We talked about tracking the data earlier. If you send a generic message to 100 people, you might get one or two responses. But if you send a more personalized email to 100 people, that's where you might get that 20 or 25 responses. And so I obviously want to get my numbers up. So I think uh, making sure that the email is, is short is a big part of it. I think making sure that there's an element of personalization is a big part of it. And I think the other thing is we tend to talk about ourselves. I'm a voice actor. I can do this. I can do that. I have this microphone. I have this studio. I have mm. Source Connect, blah, 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 blah. What you need to do is you need to write all of those. Th How do you write those things in a benefit for the recipient? So if I tell somebody I'm a full-time voice actor, they're like, big deal. But if I write in an email that I'm available for quick turnaround and can provide scripts in four hours or less, I just, that speaks to the client. Mm -hmm. Full-time doesn't mean anything, but quick turnaround, that means something, right? If I say I've got a, a U87 and I've got a this and a that, most people are like, what the crap does that mean? But exactly. if I say yeah. I can deliver you clean audio that you can instantly drop into your project, that speaks to somebody. And so it's learning how to take those things that you have that make your business good, but writing them in a way that shows the benefit to the recipient. Yeah, they went on the solutions. Yeah, they don't necessarily right. want to know how you got to the solution. Yep. I yep. use the strongest CA glue. Yes. No, it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting question here from Peggy Atwood. What about using a stage name? Does that impact building a network? I would prefer people not know my personal information. I always find that one kind of weird, but... What do you think hmm. about that? Uh, Mark, Mark Scott's not my real name. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. No, that's, I mean, for me, that was, uh, that was, that was a radio thing. Actually, actually it was just television. When I went into television, I went into the booth. I went into the voiceover booth to record my first TV show. And it was going out national across Canada and the United States. And my producer comes walking and he's like, by the way, did you want to use your name? And I was like, Oh, I never even thought about that. We should probably change that up because I don't want everybody in, you know, national audience. So I Mark, we like literally on the spot. I was like, Mark Scott. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's go with that. So I <laughs> used it like that's literally it happened in like 12 seconds in the booth as we were about to record. And I've stuck with it ever since. And I don't think it ultimately makes any difference. I mean, my real name is on my invoices so that my clients, you know, if they write me a check, they can put my real name on it. But yeah. I mean, for me, I, I don't know. It's never been an issue. I just burst the bubble and everybody knows it's not my real. Now everybody's going to be Googling, trying to figure out what is Mark Scott's real name. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a little contest on that. So write to us. And <laughs> my real name is a secret. I'm not telling you. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, no, that's I'm a real glad she asked one. that actually. Yeah, yeah that, it's a good that, question because I, I totally understand that from a privacy standpoint. It's like, I, I get that a hundred percent. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember once I was at a rival radio station while I was still working with the other one and I went with my middle name and went by Dan Roberts and you know, did I yep. keep that job? No, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> um, 
Nobody in radio gets to keep their job, Dan. Come on. No, that's true. They, as you as I like to say, we're going in another direction. Yes. Yeah. One of my favorites. George, what's this last uh, question last from Joe question. VoiceOver? From Joe VoiceOver. <laughs> when emailing, what type of job titles are we looking to send to avoid the middleman? So uh, who 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 do we want to approach yeah. in our, I guess, assuming cold emails? Yeah. It's a Who's great, the person that does this? That's a great question. And I think it's going to depend again on the genre that you're going after. Yeah. And so if you're looking at contacting advertising agencies in the commercial space, you might be looking for a creative director. If you're looking at contacting people in the e-learning space, you might be looking for an instructional designer or an e-learning developer. If you're looking to contact somebody in the video production, you could be looking for a video producer. You could be looking for an executive producer. Uh, you could be looking for a production manager, possibly. You know, if you're in the radio imaging, you're probably looking for a program director. So a lot of it depends entirely on the the type of work that you're going after. Uh, the one thing that I always hope for is don't ever let not knowing who to send it to keep you from sending the email because best case scenario if you pick the what feels like the most obvious choice and you get it wrong, you can always hope that they're going to either forward it to the correct person or they're going to respond to you and say, you know, I don't do this, but so and so does. And now you so have much better to get name. replies saying that's not the right guy right. than just nothing into the void and then yes. you're never hearing anything. Yep, exactly. Well, Mark, this has been amazing how fast it goes by when you got lots of great information to uh, to give out there we really appreciate you coming on if people want to go to your website where do they go oh there it is right the there com. that's the that's the podcast the podcast comes out every week uh all business and marketing related and i mean my whole thing is just giving you really actionable practical advice none of the fluff and crap that you don't need but you know here's actual strategies to try things to do things to experiment with covering a broad range of business and marketing topics. Uh, so that's the, that's the podcast is viewopreneur.com wherever fine podcasts are given away for free. All right. You'll probably find ours there too. Mark, thanks again for being with us and stay warm, stay healthy and keep that snowblower lubricated and ready to roll. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm done with it now for the rest of the year. Like one good snowstorm. Okay. That's enough. Yeah, you know, no. it runs, put it away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Take care, Mark. All right, we're going to take it. We're going to take a break here, and we're going to finish up uh, this particular segment right after this. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Alas Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voiceover Body Shop. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, VoiceActorWebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. It's that time in the show where we talk about our longtime sponsors and friends, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect and a lot of other tools. One of the things you want to keep in mind when using tools like Source Connect is there's a lot going on behind the scenes to make it work. It's not like a typical app that you just install and run and send files like we're used to, things that have been much more simple to use like Twisted Wave. It's an application that has an entire backend behind it, a server, network, and a support team to keep it running. And keep that in mind. It's a it's a challenge at times to keep everything running tip-top shape, and it requires some patience to get it running. So if you're interested in getting Source Connect, I highly, highly recommend either working with their team or you can also get support directly from you-know-what 
you, <laughs> that's me, uh, George the Tech. If you need a little extra helping to get yourself over the hump of using uh, Source Connect. But that all said, they've got tons of training and really great support staff to deal with all your technical issues and help you through the hurdles of getting it running and optimized. You know, we don't have ISDN anymore. We don't have a phone company to call and support it. We have to rely on these new technologies and Source Elements is there to help you. Source Connect, get a trial, go to source-elements.com, get a 15-day free trial and get used to how it works. Anyway, thanks for listening. We'll be right back to sum it up. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. V-O-B-S TV. In case you forgot. All righty. Well, <laughs> uh, next week on this very show, and by the way, Mark Scott was great. That was, I knew he would be a great guest and give us the right information that people all Absolutely. need to have. Uh, next week on this show, we'll be doing, and if you stick around live, you get to watch it live, Tech Talk number 71. Believe it or don't, it just keeps going on and on. Who are our donors of the week? I ought to scroll down and read some of these names. Yeah, they're Shall in we green. tag team like we <laughs> have before? <laughs> sure. I'll start with Rob Ryder. Patty Gibbons. Greg Thomas. Shanna Pentington Baird. Yes, Icon Productions. That's uh, Martha Kahn. Don Griffith. Stephen Chandler. Sandra Manwiller. Robert Leadham. Ant Land Productions. Hey, Shelly Avellino. Uh, Thomas Pinto. Brian Page. George Whittem, sort of senior. Yeah. Uh, Nathan Carlson. <laughs> George uh, Graham Spicer. <laughs> and the one and only Lee Penny. Uh, hey, join our mailing list because I think a lot of you probably are watching the show because I sent out the email right before the show. Oh, that's on tonight. Fabulous. It, Get on it. it really does. Um, uh, let's see. You're blogging again. If you know i am <laughs> so chances are if you post something on a facebook group and i have something to say that's more than a phrase or a sentence I'm probably going to answer it in blog form so oh, okay. uh i'll be blogging about it on my website and then posting it back on facebook because well it helps everybody including myself you know seo and all right the more yeah. you blog on your own domain the more your own website the better it helps people find you yeah i recommend you do the same Spend Already. less time proselytizing on Facebook <laughs> and spend mm. more time blogging and creating useful content and letting people know where to find it. Right. Good marketing strategy. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VO Heroes. Voice dot com. <laughs> dot com, yes. Uh, VoiceActorWebsites.com. And... and JMC, JMC demos. demos. All righty. Thanks to Jeff Holman for doing a great job in the chat room tonight. Lots of yes, chatter sir. in there. Lots of people in there. Uh, Sumer Lino for getting it done and pressing all the right buttons and making sure that, you know, we act can actually see us and hear us. And of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny and for being a donor. We really appreciate that. Well, stick around. Don't go anywhere quite yet. Cause George and I are going to do our tech talk segment next. And if you've got a tech question, Throw it in the chat room. That's the that's the advantage of watching the show live. Tell all your friends, hey, watch the show live. It's more fun that way. Anyway, uh, we're here to help you out with your home voiceover studio and your voiceover business. So join us here every week for Voiceover Body Shop. Because, you know, if it sounds good. It is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is Voiceover Body Shop. Or VO B S. Stay tuned for Tech Talk. We'll be right back.